Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, today is July 21st, Sunday, Holy Sunday. I'm hoping you are all having a blessed and restful Lord's Day. Um, I stumbled upon this article a couple of days ago about a father, Jacques de Jesus, and he was uh, taken from his um, from a homily or a retreat that he gave to the Carmel de Pontoise uh, on September the 9th, 1943. And I thought it was worthwhile reading to to you. It's very, it's very beautiful. And it's all about Jesus, the serenity of Jesus. So here we go. When we meditate on scriptures and strive to follow Christ closely, we take a careful note of what the Gospels tells us about him. We listen to those who knew him and who regularly saw, heard, and served him. From these accounts, we seek to visualize the radiant face of Christ as it was imprinted on the Veronica Veil. When we thus contemplate Christ, we are struck by one of his most characteristic features, his serenity. Christ is not the type of person whose goal on earth is to enjoy life. Every aspect of Christ's life bears the imprint of his dignified serenity. He is likewise marked by discreet silence. I would like us to meditate together on tonight on Christ's silence. Christ is characteristically serene and silent. In sharp contrast, we see the apostles as shallow types bantering among themselves and vying for the foremost places in the kingdom, which they mistakenly conceive in a material rather than a spiritual terms. If we examine the conversations of the apostles, we discover how they pose their questions to Christ, and we hear their reactions, and occasionally their responses are harsh, as when Peter scolded Christ, far from being quiet, the apostles are immersed in the noise of the world. Often as such moments, Christ quietly comes behind them. He is silent because he bears within himself a twofold vision, one embracing both heaven and the other embracing the cross. Even in the human traits of his nature, he habitually portrays a serene silence because he's already carrying his cross, which cannot be seen. Thus, we should not believe that his passion began, began on the night before his death. In truth, the cross that he carried on his shoulders as he made his way to his crucifixion on Calvary rested on him from his first day in this world. Father Jacques de Jesus, retreat for the Carmel de Pontoise in his conference number eight on silence, September 9th, 1943. And I, would believe, I believe that Father Jacques has a point here because when I look at the veil of Veronica, the thing that strikes me the most is his serenity, his calm peacefulness even, uh, you know, even in the midst of a horrifying terror of his crucifixion. But that serenity and that serenity and that peace, what I see is our redemption. I see our redemption in that serenity when I look at this face. Uh, but anyway, Father James, uh, our father, they call him Father James in translation to English. I don't know why, but... Um, uh, I don't know why Google does that, but anyways, um, what I wanted to say was also he had also quoted in one of his retreats, he said, let your life be transformed by this constant burning desire to be willing to die in order to see Christ face to face. Servant of God, Jacques de Jesus. So I'll give you a little bit of background on Father Father Jacques de Jesus. He was born on the 29th of January in 1900 in Barrington to a poor family. Uh, Lucien Benel in the fourth of eight children. He, he thinks of the priesthood and enters the age of the 12 years at, at the seminary of Rouen in 1924. He was appointed su supervisor at the College of St. Joseph where he discovered the Carmelite Monastery and he is ordained the priest the following year and reveals himself as a talented educator. But his heart hears a call to be more contemplative. After many internal and external struggles, he left the Diocese of Ruin and entered the novitiate of the, of the Carmelites at the age of 32, under the name of Brother James of Jesus. 
our father Jacques de Jesus. In 1934, he was sent to Avon, convent to found and direct the small college of St. Therese de Child Jesus. And he deploys the multi multiple ped pedagogical resources of his soul of an educator. In 1939, he was demobilized for war and taken prisoner and, that, prisoner and then released. The little college opened in 1941, but the heart of Father James is wounded by the barbaric acts of the Nazi regime, and he stands with those who suffer and are persecuted. Um, after entering the resistance, he welcomed three Jewish children to the college in March of 1943, and he was arrested shortly thereafter uh, from the Gestapo. He was sent to various prisoner war camps, and he ended up in the Mathusen camp. And uh, at the end of the liberation uh, of this camp in 1942, he was apparently... He only weighed like 30 kilograms because he was offering up a lot of his food to other people in the camp. Um, and anyway, he was so sickly that he died shortly thereafter. And his his cause his cause for canon his, his cause is up for canonization. What another example of Christ in the world when I look at when I look and read about this man. I contemplate again again about St. Maximilian Kolbe and how even in the midst of being in the uh, Nazi concentration camp, he still uh, reached deeper and gave up his life so that someone else might live. So we see an example here of the, pardon me, of the face of Christ in action. I'm a little bit choked up. Um, the face of Christ in action of servitude. Uh, I mean, how can we, uh, as weak as we are, follow an example like this? I don't know. You know, I, I just, uh, I would love to be able to walk in the footsteps of a man like this. But, you know, I, I don't know under such a, such a challenging series of events if I would be able to uh, to walk that walk but I pray and hope that I would so anyway um, just thought I'd leave you with these this uh, beautiful man and I hope I hope that he one day becomes a saint uh, Father Jacques de Jesus pray for us until next time blessed be the face of Christ blessed be his holy name God bless you all